What's up super geeks and welcome back to my channel. For today we're going to be having a look at the 2009 DC Universe Classics Joker figure from Wave 10. I know, that's quite a while ago, but those of you who are watching this channel, I'm betting that you have collected or do collect the DC Universe Classics figures. So this is kind of a neat little retro treat. I had to buy another Joker figure because I've got a custom I'm working on, so I'm going to use this minty mint one from my collection and take my old one and use them for the custom. On the back of the package, you can see that it comes with Robot Man, Beast Boy, Joker, Power Girl, Man Bat, and Forager. Those are the main figures in the wave, as well as an all-black redeco of the Batman figure and when you buy all those figures you can build the Imperiax figure as well which I don't have sadly because I never got all the figures in the wave and I never got all the parts as well. Now reading the back of the package you can see that the biography here says the Joker the clown prince of crime is Batman's deadliest and most unpredictable foe rumored to be a failed stand-up comedian turned petty criminal who fell into a vat of chemical waste while escaping from the scene of a crime that incident turned his skin white and his hair green batman knows the joker is certifiably insane which makes the end result of his actions that much more deadly <laughs> Statistics, you've got the stats on the bottom there. I'm not going to read all the stats. You can pause those if you'd like to see them. But I really just want to get to opening this figure for you. So let's just get right into it. All right, those of you who aren't openers, this is going to be rough to watch. But I'm sorry, I'm an opener. It's got to be done. Oh, man. Yeah, that wrecks the backing right there. I was thinking maybe of keeping it. Not now. Oh, and the plastic is ripping. Oh, this is brutal. I don't know about you guys, but I tended to keep these little DC Universe logos. I always thought they were really cool. Now here's the right leg of Imperiax. Very imposable. I'd hate to get kicked in the butt by this thing. But yeah, it's the only piece of Imperiax's body I currently have. So I couldn't do anything with this. He also comes with a smiling Joker fish. An unbelievably small deck of cards with a Joker on the front. And this really kind of neat superpowers themed Joker mallet. There, see the, the nose is the handle. You can see that there. You got the grinning teeth. And this was actually based on an accessory that the superpowers Joker was given. But that's his hammer. And here's Joker. I really like this figure. I could have like six or seven of these and never feel like I had too much of them. Coming in for a much closer look at this DC Universe Classics Joker action figure, you can really, really, really see how they modeled this Joker after the Superpowers Joker. But all the details are just excellent. You got the orange on his vest, but it's also shaded. I'm not sure if that's showing up in the video really well. They got his flower on the front, his little short jacket with the tails sticking out. And the cool thing about this one is the Superpowers one, the tails always came off and you lost him. These are actually part of the molding, which is really, really cool. You got his stripy pants and his, his shoes. I just, this is, in my opinion, one of probably the best DC Universe Classics action figures. Always one of my favorites. Coming in really close, let's really take a moment to appreciate the sculpting detail on this Joker figure. This is Jose Garcia Lopez's work right here, immortalized in action figure form. Good job, Four Horsemen. Seriously, five out of five stars on the sculpt of this figure head sculpt. Love it, love it, love it. Now, articulation for Mr. J is as follows. Typical DC Universe Classics articulation. The arms can go up about that far, which is, that's a lot of articulation, considering he has those big bulky shoulders on his jacket. And they go around, they can swivel, they're on a hinge ball joint. Then you've got the biceps and they swivel as well. You've got a single jointed elbow. You've got the wrists and the wrists, the hands are on a swivel as well. You've got your ab crunch. He can go down about that far and go back about that far. But it's a Joker figure, so I'm not really sure what you're looking for if you need more articulation than that on a Joker. As far as waist articulation goes, there is some, but it's really, really tight. I don't want to force it. The groin is typical for DC Universe Classics. It opens and closes on a hinge, but also can go back and forth. About that far forward, that's all you're going to get, and about that far backward. So very, very limited articulation in the legs for Joker. Except for, you still have the articulation above the knee on both legs, and you have that single jointed knee. So, that is about the articulation. If you want to make him run, that's what you're going to get. So, not the greatest articulation, but typical for DC Universe Classics. Oh yeah, and there's ankle articulation. Not a rocker, they're just on a hinge, back and forth. And, but there's not much. 
So this Joker actually doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of articulation, but for me, I'm gonna put him on a shelf or lay him down dead. Like I was saying, I'm gonna put him on a shelf with his accessories next to Harley Quinn and the rest of Batman's rogues gallery and probably not move him, only to dust him like once or twice a year. So this kind of articulation for me is fine. If you're into the more technical toy photography, the articulation in this Joker might not quite be up to par with what you're looking to do. Now, I really feel that they've done a great job in selecting the particular accessories they have to come with this Joker figure, the hammer, the deck of cards, the fish, the cane, I think they're all particularly nice accessories to have to go with this Joker figure. Here's a close up of the Joker Jester cane that he came with and I like the sculpting on this cane. It looks really good. It's probably one of my favorite DC Universe Classics accessories and goes quite nicely with the Joker. I also think that the inclusion of this Joker mallet not only looks great, but it's a nice little head nod to those of us who were collectors and fans of the superpowers back in 1985 to 87. Seriously, look at that face though. And who takes the time to carve their own face on a weapon so they can bludgeon you in the head with it? So the last thing that you see is definitely going to be their face. Whether it's on your shoulders or on the end of the weapon they're myrtleizing you with. Well I do, silly! I'm the Joker! <laughs> <laughs> of course, you could always just display him with his fish. That's a classic as far as I'm concerned. Or you could always just display him with his favorite Joker card in his hand. Read him and weep, boys! Now displayed on either side of the Joker for size comparison, we have a DC Universe Classics scale Batman figure. Admittedly a custom Jim Lee style Batman, but the size and the scale are still DC Universe Classics. And on the other side, we have the DC Icons Harley Quinn. The reason why I chose to display her next to the Joker is to show that Harley Quinn is shorter than the Joker, and this figure actually works well with the Joker. So if you have a Batman display, and you're looking for a definitive Harley Quinn to display with this Joker, the DC Icons Harley Quinn goes really, really well with this Joker. Do you hear that, Mr. J? The narrator says that we look good together, Puddin'. Either way, whether or not you choose to display this Joker in your overall DC Universe Classics display or in a Batman display of some other kind, you can't go wrong with this Joker. And if you haven't picked this Joker up and you're a Joker fan, why not? I think it's a stunning representation, especially of an 80s slash early 90s version of the Joker. And as far as I'm concerned, for me, this is the definitive Joker action figure. And I couldn't be happier with it. And with that, we've come to the end of the video, so thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. It means so much to me that you have. If you liked it, please leave a like on it so I know you liked it. Leave any comments you have down in the comment section below. If you think you'd like to see more of the kind of content that I provide on this YouTube channel, well, just hit the subscribe button, ding the bell, and you'll never miss a video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody!